Hi hey everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Dennis. So this video has got a few things going on in it. So first, I'm migrating a Intel system, fourth generation, to an 11th generation CPU. I'm going to show you how to make sure that your drive is recognized, because it wasn't, so there's was a whole thing of figuring that out. I'm going to show you that in the BIOS. And then we're going to move on to doing the actual processor, the i7-11700K. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you how to do the temps uh, using the Intel program that actually is part of the uh, motherboard software. And I'm going to do a bunch of other different testings and we'll do that as we go along so you can see it all. So it's been quite a process. Um, got quite a few things done so far. And I think if you stay tuned, you're going to find it uh, very interesting. There we go. Okay, so when you migrate a system over, so basically I cloned the, uh, the complete C drive. I did the games drive, everything like that. And I put it onto the new motherboard with CPU. Problem I had is it would not boot up to the uh, one terabyte NVMe drive I had. So I had to play around. There's a couple of things I came up with and some research. So when you're BIOS, you're going to start off, it's going to be UEFI, but you have to change it to CSM. Don't ask me why. I've never had to do that before. UEFI has always worked before, but if you wanted to recognize it when you're doing that, that's what you have to do. So I had to go into settings and I had to go to advanced and I had to go down to boot. So when you go in here, you click it, there's different ones to choose. Mine was CSM. Okay? So choose that one. And now that alone didn't do it. Because here's what happens. As soon as you change this to CSM, it's going to come up with a message when you boot up. And it's going to say, especially like if you're using just integrated graphics, it's going to say it won't work. It's, it's going to revert back to the UEFI. So the problem is you have to make sure you put a graphics card in there at that point because it's not going to work off of the integrated graphics. Don't know why that is. I just know that's what happened to me. On top of that, once I did that, then I had to go up here and put my boot drive to make sure that my NVMe drive was the first thing it recognized. Now, having said that, it still went boot to the clone. Maybe I did something wrong. Don't know. It's never have it, never been a problem before, but maybe Intel, I mean, they're always different, so maybe that's what happened. I don't know. But, so all I had to do, really, is I took my boot disk, USB boot drive. I booted back up to that with a graphics card in here, and everything went fine after that. Once I did that, I booted up, recognized the Windows, and then I just did an install, reinstalled Windows Everything was still there afterward, not a problem. So you can do that, or you can even just do like a repair and it'll refresh all the drivers, everything like that. Um, it's not what I chose, but it's certainly an option. Um, but be aware, these are all things that I'm trying as I've never done this before. So it's at your own risk, all right? Now I know that the one I tried worked, but I didn't do the repair to see if that would work. That might have been a better option. I just can't say for sure. Once all that was done, everything was great, booted up, I had the system up and running. Now, the other thing I did is I clicked on XMP profile. Uh, I didn't do any of the overclocking, which I could have. And mflash is if you want to go and uh, update your BIOS, which I will do at some point. Right? And I think I've done a video on that already. Just... Uh, not sure if I did it on an Intel system. So maybe that's something I'll do in the future. Let me know in the comments if you're interested. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll go ahead and do that. Because right now our BIOS version is pretty new. Um, it's from 2021. That's not bad. But certainly could be newer ones out there. Something I also want to touch on is when you're doing this, you have M2 Optane Genie. Okay, I don't know what is with this. But I know that it has something to do with RAID. Uh, and when I did that, my clone was wiped. It wiped it out and it was gone. 
So I had to do the clone all over again. The same thing I believe will happen if you change from HCI to RAID. Again, help me out here. Put it in the comments from your personal experience and what has happened, or maybe just what you know. Uh, if it's really a good, if it's a really good detailed comment, I'll put it, I'll pin it, and put it up there for everybody else to see. I had to check my storage to make sure that that was the what drive that was recognized first, and of course I added the two terabyte NVMe drive afterward because C drive doesn't really need to be very big. Uh, so there's three terabyte of storage on here, and I'll probably add more uh, later on as well because this is going to be used for video editing and all that kind of good stuff. Okay, so some of the things I wanted to show you is on an Intel system, you can see how it's got its own uh, stress test, uh, benchmarking, you can set profiles. All these other stuff are um, if you want to overclock and you have to agree to it if you want to. Right now, I'm running a stress test uh, and it's going to run for five minutes and it's going to show you all the temperatures. Minimum 28, recent maximum 68, Average of 49. So this is what 100% utilization all the way from down to one to full out. And it's running at 4.6 gigahertz. Anywhere from uh, 0 to 11.32 gigahertz and for range. All right, you can see minimum, average, all that kind of good stuff. Shows you the little graphs here. And over here, even over here, over here, on the right hand side here, shows you the 100% utilization, it shows you memory uh, being used, uh, package temperatures for the whole thing basically, uh, there's no power limit throttling taking place, there's no thermal throttling taking place. Um, I find this very handy information. Your package TDP is only 135 right now, pretty good. So after this is done, I'll get a ballpark for the uh, temps. Uh, then we're going to go in and do the um, benchmarking and see what happens. I'm pretty impressed with uh, this Intel build. It's the first one I've done in quite a long time. And certainly there's been uh, many, many improvements. So this is almost done. And we're looking at about 68 degrees is pretty much what it's staying at. 100% utilization. So uh, that's pretty impressive. And again, this is an i7 11700K. And there we go. CPU tested. If you wanted to test the memory, all kinds of other things up here, you could go ahead and do that. And of course, CPU stress test was passed. So this is the benchmarking uh, part of the Intel Extreme tuning utility. And we can go ahead in here and we can get everything started. And I'm just going to go Intel benchmark. And we're going to go run benchmark. And let's see what we get for our score. I have no idea how this is going to work anymore on YouTube right now uh, as it goes along. So it's going to be pretty cool to see what actually happens. So let's have a look. It's not uh, maxing the CPU at all. Processor frequency 3.8 up to 4. Okay, there's our XTU current score of 3616. And of course you can click on the compare online. Your max frequency was 4.74, and the highest CPU temperature during that was 81 degrees. So that's pretty indicative of uh, you were playing gaming for a long period of time, I would imagine. So I don't know about you, but I'm pretty impressed with all this stuff. So one other thing I thought I'd do since I'm in here is I downloaded the trial version of ADA64, the newest version, and I'm going to run a uh, system stability test. So I'm going to go down here, I'm going to click on start, and see what our temps get under that. So I'm going to let it run for a while. You can see it's like all over the place over here. I'm not sure what's going on there. I've never seen that before. But we're at 100% utilization. And we look like we go uh, down for anywhere around 29 to 36. And we're hitting a high of 79 right now. And uh, I just want to see if it hits that same 81 as before, or if it goes higher. So we're going to let it run for a good five minutes at least, and then we'll come back. So we're already, yeah, it's already popped up the 83. So let's see what happens. So on the left-hand side, I just opened Data64 CPU ID. So it just gives you all the information uh, 
on the processor itself, of course, that it's a Rocket Lake S LGA 1200, 11th Gen, uh, i7-11700K running at 3.6 gigahertz right now. Shows you your voltages, uh, your CPU clock and multiplier, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, we have Intel Tiger Lake Z590 motherboard, and it's running off of a uh, graphics card. It's a 1080, uh, GTX 1080, and of course we're running in uh, DDR4-2400, uh, 16, 16, 16, and 39 CR2. Okay, so I know it's lower tier, but I'm probably going to change that up after. So anyway, we're going to let this run, like I say. It's going crazy over there. I've never seen that go quite so... Um, like all over the place here like now this is a newer version of ad64 so maybe it's just maybe like a lot more sensitive so it really picks up on the highs and lows which is okay and now it actually came up and said cpu throttling overheating detected oh well that's new i've never seen that happen before yeah it's getting up there about hmm okay well let's Obviously, we're going to have to have a little bit more, a little better cooling. Because I can't have that. So I'm going to have to see what I'm going to have to do. But, hey, right now it's only getting up. I mean, we are maxed out. I mean, at 85 degrees is the max that it hit. So why it would be throttling at that, I don't know. Uh, I know say, AMD certainly didn't seem to do that. So it could be the trial software. It could be, I don't know. This is all new to me, just as much as it is to you if you're watching this for getting any information. But at least it's accurate and you're seeing it as it happens. Welcome back here uh, at the end of the five minute mark and see what's going on. So after running for about five and a half minutes, we did hit a high of 90. Now the CPU the throttling says it's only a max of 2% overheating, which is not horrible. You got to remember, like I say before, lots and lots of times I'll repeat this. We're maxing out everything on the CPU to see just how bad it can get. And if 90 degrees and just a 2% throttling, you know what, I'm okay with that. So one of the things I did want to point out is uh, showing you all the different um, temperatures, everything on the left-hand side here, when you bring up the um, this, this particular panel. And we did hit a max of 85 for the CPU. I thought it was 90, but they're all in. maximum it says is 86. So, and the other thing I want to mention is there are no, this is not in a case. It's like open air. So you've got no additional fans helping to cool it down. So once this is in a case which has three fans in the front and one in the back on top of the one that is already on the motherboard, you're going to have a lot of additional cooling. So that 2% will probably just go away. So we won't really have to worry about it. So the other thing was all that additional jagged lines, all that kind of stuff. With the new ADA 64 that they're using now, it's measuring every CPU core. Now, I, I guess before it didn't do that when I was doing with AMD. On this, it does, and it's showing it to you. So that's what we were looking at before. So one of the last tests I want to run is uh, Cinnamon Char 23. I'm going to run the... Uh, CPU, multi-core, and single-core, and get our scores, and then we'll do a comparison on the left there, and I'll zoom in so you can see all that. So I'm just going to go ahead, run the test, and we'll come back to it. Okay, so I ran the uh, CPU multi-core. We got a score of 14, 459, and you can see everything on here where it compares. Okay, you've got the AMD Ryzen Threadripper on top, the Intel Xeon, which always seems to be second and the Threadripper 1950X. And of course it sits comfortably at fourth spot. Scores are what matters. So our score is on the top here. Okay, CPU multi-core. So I'm gonna run the single core and we'll see what we get from that. Okay, so we've run our Cinebench R23 on the CPU multi-core and single core. So our CPU multi-core is at 14,459 points and our single core is 1551. So you can see it on the single core, uh, it's sitting at the first spot. So I'm pretty impressed with that, actually. So I, I zoomed that in so you can see all that. And that's uh, probably the last test I think we're going to do here. All right, everybody, so there's a bunch of different tests. 
how to get your M.2 recognized on a new system. And this is one where I had cloned the hard drive. Um, it didn't clone didn't take for whatever reason. Well, no, it did. Sorry. The clone took, but when I tried to boot to it, I was having issues. So until I went through all the steps of putting it into CSM mode and realizing that then I'd be, it won't use the integrated graphics and that I had to go with the uh, dedicated graphics card, then everything came up. I was able to assign a boot drive, all that kind of stuff. A uh, little bit of work, but it worked after all. So anyway, now worst case scenario, that you get to that point and your clone for some reason doesn't work. All you got to do, uh, reinstall your Windows operating system over top of it. And you're still going to have your other data there. All right. But again, all this stuff is at your own risk. I'm just putting it out there as what I did. And it should help you. But have a backup, of course, in case things go wrong. And there's a couple of times that happened to me. So having it backed up was the way to have done it. Anyway, if you like the video, hit that like. If you don't, well, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you didn't like and what you want to see in the future. If you're new here, think about subscribing. Uh, hit that bell for notifications for videos as they come up. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a good day.